said that Jesus Christ has risen and he is the open door how you doing everyone welcome to another episode of the Cajun conservative where we talk about life we talk about liberty we talk about the pursuit of happiness and yes we show the world that Cajuns do have intelligence hope you're having a good day good week wherever you are because this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it hope you're having a good day uh ladies and gentlemen if you live in the state of Louisiana you you're waterlogged <laughs> been uh, been raining now who every day for the last week i'm not be i'm not trying to be a weatherman i'm just uh it's raining a lot but hey anyway we still good we still got our lives we're still living life fully unto christ if you are a believer of jesus christ if not as i say always in the end of the show if you want to know jesus christ and know a little bit more about my faith you can always email me at the cage conservative five uh, you can also listen to brothers just searching we go ahead and explain the uh, very often of how you can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. All you have to do is give a listen, uh, to brothers just searching and all that good stuff. But anyway, if this is your first time, thank you for coming on to the podcast. It's an honor and blessing to always have new followers and new listeners. If you can consider hitting that subscribe button and also all to my all returning fans, my all returning listeners. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. I just, uh, Everyone that has returned to the podcast, thank you for your continued support. Uh, that's on Apple, Google, Spotify, Rumble, YouTube, Amazon Music, and all them good platforms. If you want to know more about me and the podcast, go check out the Cage Conservative at uh, wordpress.com. And we, uh, if you have any questions, the Cage Conservative Five at gmail.com. Always welcoming emails. Uh, there is ways on the Anchor site that you can go ahead and check it out. Send us emails and. All that good stuff. And ladies and gentlemen, we uh, we have a lot of news. We have a lot of news as always. Uh, but I, I want to dive into Nancy Pelosi. Now, I don't normally agree with Nancy Pelosi, ladies and gentlemen. I, I just don't. Um, Nancy Pelosi, if you think of left, think extreme left, where she is, you know, best analogy I could tell you, if you're looking from home plate on a baseball field and uh, we would call the left side of the batter, the left field, the right side of the batter or the right side of the plate, uh, right field. If you think of Nancy Pelosi on the left side of that field, she's past foul line. She's past the fence and she's all the way into the next field. And that's how left Nancy Pelosi is. So I don't agree with Nancy Pelosi. Um, it was, it, it's very rare. Now, if, if you are sitting down or if you, well, correction, if you're standing up, you better sit down. Uh, if you know me real well, because you know what I'm about to say is going to make you, um, like, wait, wait, what's going on? Isaac is Isaac, uh, just as he flipped as he, what, what is his, what's going on? Um, I'm going to say, I agree with Nancy Pelosi on a statement. Now, like I said, I hope you were sitting down. If not, you probably fell down back. And like, uh, as I said last week with star Wars, <sighs> this fall backwards. But so I don't always agree with Nancy Pelosi, but last week or the last episode that I came with you, um, we were talking about the call, phone call with Joe Biden and the president of China, Ying Jing or so, what I've, something of that nature, his name is. And and the Chinese president and their government told Biden, if you mess with fire, be ready to get burned. And they told President Joe Biden, please tell your House Speaker not to land in Taiwan, because apparently uh, Nancy Pelosi was taking a trip to Asia and Taiwan. It was on her plan to stop. Now, why did she stop there? It is to promote independence. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I I'm going to be blunt with you. I don't disagree with Nancy Pelosi on that statement, because if you look at this situation with Taiwan, Taiwan is fighting for his independence from China. China still believes, hey, Taiwan is still our province. China believes that Taiwan is the, that, that's our place. That's that's where we control. And if you study Chinese history just a little briefly, a little bit, you know that the Chinese government is not 
a democracy. It's not a republic. It, it, you know, it, it is a dictatorship. What the president says and what the government tells you to do, that's it. It is a socialistic, communistic government. And Taiwan don't want to be that way. So China was telling and, and anyone promoting that to the Taiwan people, China feels as a threat because ladies and gentlemen, I, I, look, and there's some leftists out here that are socialists, um, right at the top of my head, Bernie Sanders, that believes that we should be more socialistic and be more into this government, that the government runs everything and the government tells us what to do and that the government sets our taxes and everything of that nature. Uh, Bernie Sanders is very close to the ch communistic dictatorship of China. I, that's just what I feel and what I observe and what I see Bernie Sanders. Now, Nancy Pelosi ain't that far off. No, don't get me wrong. You know, a lot of people say, well, you, you're talking about Nancy Pelosi and you're praising Nancy Pelosi. But Nancy Pelosi is similar to that way. Yes, I agree with that. But she went there as a leader to promote independence. And we should all agree with that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we fought for our independence against Great Britain back in 1776 to, eight, uh, to 1782, if, I'm, if my math is correct on that. So we as a country, we should know that this right here, this the, 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 the spread of independence for a country to be its own sovereign should be promoted. But since China has said no we don't want nancy pelosi there and, and and biden even warning the biden white house warning nancy pelosi is not safe and that she should not go nancy pelosi did something that joe biden could backwards joe could not do she stood up to the chinese government like i said i'm not i'm not I'm not in favor of her policies, but I like her stand right here. She was basically telling China, even as she has some of the same views as them, said, listen, I'm not stopping. I'm the House Speaker of the United States of America, the greatest country in the world. I'm going. Like I said, Nancy Pelosi had warnings from the Chinese government. They said, listen, if you come, we're going to consider that as an invasion of our country. And we're going to go ahead and even to the point of saying, we're going to shoot down her plane. As much as I disagree with Nancy Pelosi, ladies and gentlemen, I believe she did right right here. She stood up to a, 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 a tyrannical government, a communistic government that controls their people. That controls their people and tells them what to do, how to work, what to say, what not to say. They don't have freedom of the press there. If their if they're members of the press does not print something that is approved by the government, guess what? They can go to jail. Nancy Pelosi said, I'm going to Taiwan because she was promoting their independence. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, disclaimer, I never agree with Nancy Pelosi, but this is what I will say. A broken clock is right twice a day. Just letting you know on this. Now, what I get from this, that the House Speaker, as much as I disagree with her, stood up to a tyrannical government while the president let the Chinese president th threaten him. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Just think about it. Now, Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden, they're part of the same... Same political party. But instead of the president telling the, the House Speaker, I, I, I think you should go. Let's stand up to the Chinese communists. Let's tell them they don't rule America. This is supposed to be an independent, sovereign country. We're going to go instead. Now, um... This is from Town Hall. Previously, China state media threatened to shoot Pelosi's U.S. military aircraft out of the sky and warned that a visit would ignite a power keg and a situation in the Taiwan Straits. Now, since then, China has surrounded Taiwan. She, she left. At the time of this recording, China has... Uh, she's left, so she's fine. She's not, she's not in no immediate danger. Like I said, she left, but it's going to the point of this. Now, this is why I say... The president is bending the knee to the Chinese government. I have an article here. 
And I went and looked this up because I remember this happening. I read it in an article, couldn't find the article, so I typed it up in Google. Biden says U.S. willing to use force to defend Taiwan, propping backlash from China. This is from a CNBC article, which was written May 23rd, 2022. Just a couple of months ago, ladies and gentlemen. The U.S. president said on Monday that at the time of their article, he will be willing to use force to defend Taiwan, propping thanks for the uh, democracy self-run island, but sharp criticism from China. When asked at the joint news conference with Japan Prime Minister Fruma Kashina, whether the U.S. would be prepared to defend Taiwan if attacked, Biden says yes. Now, Biden, in this statement, supported Taiwan's independence. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. But now Kirby, his national uh, secretary of defense, is running around saying that the White House does not encourage the independence of Taiwan. And also they go ahead and they say, well, we don't encourage China being a dictatorship over these people in this island. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I said, this is why I do commend the House Speaker right here. Nancy Pelosi has got a little bit of respect for me. She said, I'm not stopping. I'm going to Taiwan. I'm going there. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about independence. I'm going to go ahead and talk about things that, that they need to hear to be encouraged them to fight for their independence. Also on a point, I, I did hear this from my, my father. My father don't listen to the show that much because he, his blood pressure rises when we talk about politics. But he said this is kind of funny. Biden will go ahead and encourage Ukraine to fight for their independence against Russia. But will not support Taiwan in ch- for, uh, fighting his independent in China. Now, I'm not the only person on the right that is commending Dow speakers. This comes from the Daily Callers. Republicans praise Nancy Pelosi's Taiwan trip with four words in a row. Republicans praise Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's de- uh, de- delegation in Taiwan, even after the White House expressed apprehension about the trip. Pelosi did not officially announce Taiwan will be a part of her trip, which also includes Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, and South Korea. She touched down uh, Tuesday evening local time as, and is reported scheduled to meet with the Taiwanese president, Tasha Ing Win, Wednesday morning local time. President Joe Biden previously stated July 20 that the military thinks it is not a good idea for Pelosi to visit the island democracy right now. Republicans defended the trip. I thought no members of the GOP joined Pelosi's delegation. Uh, This is coming from Don uh, uh, Sullivan of Alaska. He said, we support Speaker of the House House Representatives Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan. For decades, members of the United States Congress, including previous speakers of the House, have traveled to Taiwan. This travel, consistent with the United States' one-China policy, to which we are committed. We are committed now more than ever to all elements of Taiwan Revolution Act. 26 Republican senators led by Don uh, Savella of Alaska said in a statement. So Nancy Pelosi is getting praised for this. Like I said, my my big story of this, I'm going to go back to this, that we're standing up to China. At least one of our leaders are. And look, this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Biden can't stand in front of a door without buckling. I'm sorry. You have one of the most leftist leaders in this country telling China, I'm not listening to you. I think that's why she went to Taiwan, to be honest with you. I think she went there because she, the the Chinese government told us in America, y'all can't come. And Nancy Pelosi, as bad as the leftist she is, she said, you know what? I'm American. I have the right to. Now, I'm not saying America should be this big bully person, but Taiwan should be independent, ladies. I think every country should be independent. I think every country should be a, 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 a republic. I think every, you know, a, 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 a country where we get you get to vote in your leaders. Oh, China does that. Yeah, but it's been proven that China's elections are fraud, ladies and gentlemen. 
China is run by the communist dictatorship. And I think us as Americans should go ahead and do this. Now, this came from Town Hall as well. This came on the 2nd, which is uh, Tuesday. China makes another major move with Pelosi in Taiwan. After threats from the Chinese Communist Party and governing from the Biden administration, groveling from the Biden administration, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a trip to Taiwan. During the daily briefing at the White House, Monday, National Security Council of uh, Constructor and Strategy Commander John Kirby stressed that nothing has changed the U.S. policies toward China and that President Biden does not support Taiwan's independence. He also falsely claimed that there has been no drama with the Pelosi trip. That's a lie. I'm trying to find where... Yes, this comes from Conflict News, the Twitter page. China, China, uh, China... Uh, the Chinese military announces military exercise and training ac- activities, including live fire drills in multiple areas around Taiwan between Thursday and Saturday. So, so the Chinese government has come from the conflict news that the Chinese are surrounding Taiwan as we speak. Now, we have to see what happens. Now, I want to ask a question, though. Will Biden use this example to stand up to China? No, he won't. No, I'm sorry. He, he has buckled on the phone call. He was begging Nancy Pelosi not to go. And people thought Russia had something over on Trump. It's been proven that Hunter Biden had ties with China. And I, I believe this is one of the most compromised presidents there is, especially with China. Because it's kind of funny, ladies and gentlemen, ever since he got in there, he has been trying to please China. He has been trying to please the Chinese government. And he can say it's for diplomatic reasons, or he can say it's because of of um of uh goods and stuff that we get, transports and stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what China got on Biden, but ladies and gentlemen, this is just ridiculous. I never thought I'd see a president not support a country trying to trying to be independent. When a couple of months ago he said he would fight, he would send military people over there to help them fight if they needed help with the independence from China. But look, like I said, I, I, before I go to my next segment, I commend Nancy Pelosi. I do. Because Nancy Pelosi did something that President Joe Biden would have not, has not done. She stood up to the Chinese government. She stood up to the Chinese government and she went ahead and stood her ground. I commend her. I do not agree with her politically. I, I, I could say that as I don't know how many times in this podcast, but at least Nancy Pelosi did something that President Joe Biden could uh, can't he hasn't done stood up to china i'll be right back after this short break how you doing everyone isaac here i'm the cajun conservative and i want to thank brother lanny hayes from hayes's dump truck service for their generous support of the cajun conservative and brothers just searching hayes's dump truck service serves the lafayette and surrounding areas if you have any job that you need done, like clean up or hauling material to your job site or your home, we haul limestone, we haul sand, we haul topsoil, any type of material you need. If you're in the Lafayette and surrounding areas, please call Brother Lanny Hayes at 337-852-8043. Remember, Hayes is Dump Truck Service, where Jesus is Lord of the company. With your blood, cleansed and made us whole. Not one soul. All right, everybody, welcome back to the second segment of the Cajun Conservative Show today. Uh, so, we, you know, I got some news articles here that I'd like to cover. One, this is from the Daily Wire. Now, I, I found this story and I'm like, wow. Uh, <laughs> trans cheerleader booted from camp for allegedly choking female teammate. You know why? Call me man with a hoo-hoo. I'm not going to say the word for family-friendly entertainment. But a transgender cheerleader who is a biological male was criminally charged last week for allegedly choking a female teammate at a cheerleader camp. Fox News reported the incident occurred at Rogers College in Texas at a female teammate allegedly called Avira Channel Madlock, a man, and said that the Matlock should not be on the team. Well, guys, I'm offended, retired 
as a cheerleader as of last night at 5.30. A girl on the team who's being very disrespectful told me I am a man with a genitalia that belongs to a man. And that guy should not be on the on the team. The transgender cheerleader report uh, the uh, channel Madlock reportedly posted on Facebook. I stand up for all. I stand up for myself, and she called her mom and dad because she was scared. Because I stood up for myself. Her father says she stood. Uh, she still has testosterone and a man genitalia and i will kill anyone who comes after my daughter the report said that madlock claimed that the training made transphobic and racial remarks before the alleged incident happened and that the video shown of the cheerleaders hiding from madlock ladies and gentlemen this is all over the nation i'm sorry this is this, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna say this uh the other uh well last last saturday i finally got to watch what is a woman by matt walsh and he brought this out of men that are going into women's sports because they unfortunately stink at the man competitive uh, competitive level uh the man that calls himself Lisa Thomas um was stunk at men swimming became champion and that's just one incident this has happened all over the nation ladies and gentlemen women are not comfortable with men that say they're women going into this this area of profession and you know i i think that this is what gets me about this story right here before we move on to joe manchin and christian cinema and all the drama that's happening around the inflation reduction act which it really isn't we're going to talk about that in a little bit um all these people all these people are coming out i'm a woman i'm a woman listen if you have men genitalia and you still look at women with lust. Yeah, look, God made two genders, male and female. I, I, look, the, the, the racist and tra transphobic. See, a lot of people are going to say that, ladies and gentlemen. That, oh, Isaac, you're transphobic and you're racist for saying that. Oh, why? For telling the truth? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring out, because I just thought of this. And I'm reading. I, 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 could, I stopped reading it for a while because I got extremely busy. But I started reading Phil Robinson's book again last night, and he made a line on there. Let's see. I know I highlighted it. Yes, this is uh, this is from page seventy-two. This I'm on the e-book uh, e on the page, but listen to it. When Jesus said this, he wasn't defined. When uh, I'm going to quote the scripture: "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me." John fourteen six. Watch what Phil says. When Jesus said this, he was defining the truth about the way as if it was a struck, it was it was a struck concept. He wasn't saying, I will tell you the truth. He was actually saying, I am the truth. Look up truth in heavenly dictionary, and there's one word that defines, and it's Jesus. What he's saying right there, ladies, Jesus is the truth. Jesus quote the Bible quotes that there's only two genders, male and female, Genesis chapter one to chapter three. And that is true. The Bi John chapter one. I know I'm going to a Bible lesson right here. John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Who was the word? It was Jesus. Jesus is true. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the father, but by me. So when Jesus says something, it is the truth. And this article right here, when you have a man saying, no, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. And that I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I want to be on the cheerleaders team. He is denying truth. Now, people might say, oh, Isaac, yeah, that's kind of dogmatic. Isaac, that's kind of, you know, uh, transphobic. No, I'm just telling you the truth. This man should not be on a cheerleading squad unless he's one of the ones in college where he's the man that holds up the woman. I don't know. I just, this whole concept of transgenderism and you can change your pronouns or you can go ahead. And I even heard uh, there's a Disney star. I don't think I saved the article, but she used to use, she said, I was non-binary, but now I want to be called her and she. And when they ask why you want to do it, because I feel more feminine now than I ever did before. You should, you're a woman. But now look, keep, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I know I got to move to my next segment and my next topic. This is going to come out more. This story, these stories of, of, of men, look, I, I said it the other day and I laughed at that. This is how truth is coming out. This is showing the hypocrisy of this. Man that went to prison said, hey, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. I want to be in a women's uh, prison facility. 
Oh, yeah, we're going to put you in a women's facility. Got two women pregnant. Uh, if you're a man, you can't get a woman. If you're a woman, you can't get another woman pregnant. But a man can get a woman pregnant. And I'm sorry for Google. Men cannot get pregnant. Like I said, I've, I've had three kids. And my, my wife, if my wife could have traded places with me, she would have told me, yep, you're going to have this one. But she didn't because that's not how God made us. And Jesus is true. So, all right, let's move on. Like I said, a Bible lesson right there, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I, you got to realize I'm a minister before I'm a political commentator. Just saying the truth. This, this, just using that out. Let me flip my iPad back. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to the next segment. Uh, the next story. So, um, Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer came out and I explained this briefly the other day when I talked about how the Democrat party wanted to have a certain bill pass. Republicans had the leverage. Republicans told them, no, we're not going to do that. If you'll pass bill back better, Joe Manchin lied and said, nope, I'm not in negotiations. I'm done talking about that. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. This is against my conviction. And then all of a sudden, after they get the chips bills passed, which is also proven to not be healthy for America, um, Chuck Schumer and Joe Manchin said, hey, we have this bill we got, and uh, we're going to call it the, um, the Inflation Reduction Act. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to, it's not going to raise taxes. It's not going to go ahead and put people in a bind. It, it, it's, it's good. I heard Joe Manchin in an interview with, on Fox News uh, yesterday where he said, this is not a blue bill. This is not a red bill. This is a red, white, and blue. This is an American bill that's going to help Americans and it's going to go ahead and reduce inflation. Well, this is from the Daily Mail. And this is the article. Republicans share a study claiming Dems $433 billion bill would raise taxes. This has been the big story, and they have been pushing Joe Manchin, some on the right. Uh, Joe Manchin has not been on Newsmax that I'm aware of, but he has been on Fox News, and he went last Sunday to all the news and telling people, hey, this bill is correct, this bill is right, this bill will not raise taxes, and he's just, he's just going along. I believe Joe Manchin is just bluntly lying because he knows the Democrats need a win in, uh, in November, and he's not up for election until 2024. And also there's some other battles we're going to go ahead and talk about with him and Christian Sinema in a second. But Senate Democrats Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 would raise federal taxes for Americans in every income bracket, according to the study shared by Republicans on the Senate Financial Committee. Now, Joe Manchin said, well, this is all Republicans doing this. There's no, there's, the whole committee has not looked at it and said it, but there's more things coming. If the projection proves true, it would cause doubt on President Joe Biden's promise to not raise taxes on Americans making less than 400000 per year. The study, comes, the study by the Joint Committee of Taxation found that taxpayers beginning in less than 200000 per year would see their taxes raised by $16.7 billion over a decade. By the study, speculation about the efforts of the package 15% minimal corporate tax rate would it suggests it could po pass off onto working workers and shareholders. Also a factor's possible effect on the stock market that would affect company shareholdings and people who rely on pensions and other small similar funds. Um is so so now I got a question. Did what does Chuck Schumer say about that? Not Chuck Schumer, Joe Manchin. Well, Joe Manchin, as I said, according to Fox News, this is what the article reads, Manchin disputes data showing social spending bill would raise taxes on middle class during a recession. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a recession. I'm going to define recession as what a, uh, what a recession is defined as. Two negative growths of the GDP in two quarters. That is the definition of a recession. Biden says no. A lot of people say no. This is what... Uh, the article says on Fox News, as the United States ends into a recession following two quarters of negative growth, I just mentioned that, Senator Joe Manchin is disputing data that showed his bill would raise taxes on the middle class during speech and on a tough economy. We have agreed to, we have to agree to disagree the difference of opinion Manchin 
Democrat of West Virginia said when asked by Fox News Digital about the analysis from a nonpartisan joint committee on taxation showing that the bill would hike middle class taxes. The committee analysis said Manchin's bill officially totaled the, titled the Inflation Reduction Act would raise 2023's taxes on six of the eight income categories lower than 200000 Also breaking a promise from Joe Biden. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be honest with you. Joe Manchin is a Democrat. And for some reason, Democrats love raising taxes. Now, it's just not Joe Manchin as well. It is also the Democrats and also the White House saying this. This comes from the Daily Caller. Democrats claim the Inflation Reduction Act won't raise taxes. Here's why that's not true. Now, this is like I said from the Daily Caller. The Inflation Reduction Act is set to increase taxes on a variety of every income tax bracket, despite promises from the Biden administration and arguments from the Democrats that the regular Americans would not see their tax bill increase under the proposal, according to the data from the Congressional Joint Committee of Taxation. President Biden issued a statement last week saying that the legislation of the reconciliation bill intended to reduce inflation and the federal deficit include no tax increase for those making under 400,000. He said it again, apparently backwards. Joe didn't read the bill, but taxes would go up for the middle class Americans across the board, as well as those making under 10,000 between 30 and 40,000, while not a single income group would see cuts until 2031, according to the GCT estimates now ladies and gentlemen this is the problem with joe manchin right here joe manchin lied it's been proven the joint committees have said that it's going to raise taxes now you can be in denial like the white house is fox news white house correspondent peter dorsey press white house press secretary kareen jean pierre about the rise in taxes on the inflation reduce act of 2022 dorsey asked monday if president joe biden would rescind his support for the inflation reduce Act because remember he said no tax i'm not going to raise taxes on people that make over four hundred thousand uh, under four hundred thousand dollars because the rich has to pay their fair share remember that ladies and gentlemen that's a quote from joe biden Proposed by Senator Majority Leader, uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Democrat West Virginia Joe Manchin, given that Biden promised not to raise taxes on anyone making four hundred thousand a year, the press secretary confirmed that the president continues support for the bill. His promise is going to uh, his promise it wasn't going to raise taxes on anybody making less than four hundred thousand a year. But the Joint Committee said that is not true. Dorsey said this is Corrine Jean Pierre's quote. Well, that's not cor- that's not that's not correct. That's that's incorrect. So this is what Peter Dorsey asked her. So the Joint Committee on Taxation, which you guys hurdled as an effective body when you said you were selling the inflation package, is not to be trusted here. He said, the press secretary said that the GCT report is incomplete because it does not include the benefits of legislation would provide the Americans. She added that several experts dispute the report for excluding the benefits it would have on clean energy, lowering the deficit, and prescribed drugs. So, so those things is going to lower the prices down. But la- see, that's the thing. They dispute that on that, but they don't dispute that on the taxes. So Joe Biden has lied. Joe Manchin has lied. Now, will this bill get through? We really going to have to see. Because this is a fact. I heard this. I told someone when they was asking me, and this was last Sunday when they talked to me about this bill and it brought up, they said, Isaac, this bill got to go through a 60 vote threshold. Not necessarily. Um, I said, no, because it's a, I thought it was like bill back better where they pass it through the parliamentary system where they only need to get 51 votes. Come to find out it hasn't gone through that system yet. Um, it, it does faces, um, this, and this comes from Fox news where I learned this Schumer mentioned social spending and tax bill faces major hurdles as them seek quick passage. So they want to hurry up and get this passed, but to get it to the 51 threshold, they have to go ahead and face the parliamentary system. And they're going to have to try to find out if that can work. If that works, then they have an easier way to pass it. But if they don't pass it, they got to go through the filibuster. Which, if it has, if it goes through the filibuster, unless you have people like backstabbing Cassidy, it's not going to work. It's not going to go through. Um, now, there is another factor to this, though, because Senator um, uh, Christian Cinema has not supported, or has said she did, she has not said if she was going to support it or not support it. That's the issue right here, ladies and gentlemen. Manchin is really pumping. Uh, the other day, I think it was yesterday, Tuesday afternoon, which was the second of August. 
Joe Manchin was talking with her a little bit about this. But Senator uh, Senator Christian Cinema is still reading the text. Um, there's a lot of things in this bill that she has not supported in Build Back Better. So now I'm not putting my hope in the Christian Cinema because Christian Cinema failed us on another legislation. She the only thing her and Joe Manchin has been consistent on is saying that they're not going to change the filibuster rule. Now, Joe Manchin, he can say what he wants. This is going to raise taxes. Biden can go ahead and say what he wants and say this isn't going to raise taxes. It's going to raise taxes. There's a lot of problems with this bill. If it goes up to a 60 vote threshold, it's not going to work. Now we got to see what happens with all the um, the uh, parliamentary system rules. Uh, McDonald Bird rule process also presents another hurdle for the Democrats that it will take time. Furthermore, McDonald could advise that some key elements of the bill should be removed to comply with the Bird rule, which generally says only provisions that impact federal renewal and spending can be in a reconciliation bill. So there's a lot of things that they might take out this bill that other Democrats are not going to not going to uh, want. One quick note as well. Uh, Joe Manchin might get get deuced by some Republicans, this count, uh, not some Democrats uh, in this town hall article right here says is Manchin about to get ruled by Democrats. The reason being is that there's a pipeline in here in this bill. It's a 304 mile gas pipeline in West Virginia that Joe Manchin wants to open up to lower gas prices. Well, he got that right. I do agree with him on that. The thing of it is you have fossil fuel idiots like Joe uh, Bernie Sanders and other Democrats that are saying, no, we don't want that. So will they, if they take this out the bill, this bill's done in the water. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of problems with this bill. Uh, from a conservative side. Now, I, I said it last week that Republicans were stupid to go ahead and give them the chip bill. Now they don't have no leverage. A lot of things might, this bill might not go through. This might just be something for them to get their name in the paper. Oh, we tried. But ladies and gentlemen, now like, like I said, I don't put my faith in Christian cinema. Christian cinema has done great things for us. She has stopped legislation that would hurt our country. But at the end of the day, as I say about Joe Manchin, she is a Democrat. And I think if this goes down, to where this needs 51 votes, this is going to pass. But if it stays with the filibuster, no, it won't. Uh, just, hey, be in hope, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we can hope for. On that note, I'll be right back after this short break. Cheers and good on you, boys and girls. My name is Scott Ford, and I have a show on Rumble. It's the Scott Ford Show, all in one word, the Scott Ford Show, and it's on Rumble. And I also have a motivational success show on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell. That would mean a lot to me. Enjoy your life. Thank you, Isaac. God bless. You're my peace of mind When this old world seems to get all right, everybody, welcome back to the third and final segment of this midweek episode. Unless you're listening on Sunday, then you might think this is the first week of the, you know, podcasting. I love podcasting, guys. Uh, you know, that, that's one thing, you know, I say midweek episode because this is the time I record in the midweek. Uh, but you might listen to this the intel of the week, the weekend. I don't know. Uh, but hey, I'm glad you're here. I just, I'm just going to say I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're listening. And uh, I, I, I hope you you as a listener, I, I hope you know that this is just, I, I hope you have fun listening to this podcast. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I do have guests on every so often I have, you know, I'm excited right now, especially with the Facebook page. If you didn't like the Facebook page yet, please go like it. Uh, I've got politicians following this show now. Uh, I got a, I think I got a, a Senate candidate. Uh, yesterday I got a notification that's, uh, I think it's from Massachusetts. Let me go see. Um, but yeah, I, I've got some people that, that follow us. Let's see. Let's see what it's, uh, yeah. From Massachusetts, the congressional eight, uh, district eight congressional district out there in Massachusetts. Uh, I can't, I'm trying to see, read the name. Um, Anyway, I don't want to butcher the name. I apologize if I missed your name wrong. But anyway, no, but uh, there's a lot of people that there's some politicians starting to, hey, starting to listen to this thing. So I'm excited, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but I hope you know I have fun. If I have fun on the Facebook page. I have fun doing this. I hope you have fun as well. If you have fun, please send me a message and let me know how you enjoyed the show. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, 
I normally on third segments, the stories that I really want to get to, I try to cram them in for the 15, 20 minutes that I have left with you guys. And I want, uh, I got a couple of stories here that I want to briefly touch on and end this thing out, go home. And y'all, you know, y'all can't wait for the next episode or start studying for the next episode or whatever. Um, so, so this is the thing that I, I, I'm getting to right here. There was a news article from Business Insider. Now, I, I realized that these are a lot of left-leaning um, papers that I'm reading this from. Uh, but the, Apple News is one of the best things I, I believe that had happened because you have politics and you can see what other people think. I got the Daily Wire, Daily Caller, Breitbart, Town Hall, Red State, all these, all these different newspapers. So I, I, I hope I balance it out very, very well. But this came from Insider and Business Insider, and this is the article where it says Jill Biden wishes people saw more of Joe Biden's accomplishments and his work. Um, it starts off with saying these problems are coming so fast and so furious and certainly a lot of it's in the dark. Like you said, Jill Biden said in an interview with Real Simple, but I wish people could see more of what Joe has accomplished and how hard he's working. I'm not doubting he's working hard. He's working hard to destroy this country. Um, and I, in my notes, I put, what has he done? Uh, I can, you know, Miss. Well, oh, correction, not miss. Dr. Jill Biden. Your husband back when Joe had done a lot. He has raised inflation to the highest it has ever been. He has raised gas prices to new records. And now he's bragging. I saw the White House. 80 cents. The gas prices have went down. We are doing so much for the American people. People are saving so much, of, uh, so much dollars a month. And I, they have one one guy that followed me. He said, um, you're saying that, but people are still hurting because, you know, yeah, people may be saving 80 cents a gallon at the pump right now, but they were saving almost $3 when, when you took office in February. So we're still paying almost $3 a gallon. Also, backwards Cassidy, back, uh, backstabbing Cassidy, um, said on his Facebook page, uh, I, still prices over the, are over four dollars a gallon still in a lot of country a lot of states and the natural average is still over four dollars a gallon so that, that's something biden did he raised gas prices he raised inflation um and the immigration problem has grown far worse than under president donald trump um also biden is spending your money where i don't think it needs to be spent what you talking about isaac this come from the daily caller uh the biden administration spending up to three hundred thousand in taxpayers money to boost lgbt social acceptance in oh what state what state isaac is it uh is it louisiana is it texas is it uh wyoming is it california nope in Botswana. Botswana. What what state is that? Is not a state. It's in South Africa. The Biden administration is sending up spending up to three hundred thousand in tax dollars to promote gay and transgender social acceptance in Bywana, according to the federal grant listing review by the Daily Caller's New Foundation. The, the Department of State will award the U.S. organization or, or economist institution with the funds so that they may b uh, blo uh, booster, uh, booster the LGBTQI plus communications initiative and build support network and organizations in the African country. The principal, which will the participants, which will travel to the country and spend up to 18 months. There will be tasked with promoting gay and transgender acceptance amongst influential religious groups and traditional groups. <laughs> Bastawana, Bats, Bas, ba, uh, Botswana. Africa is getting 300,000. Well, correction. And I know fact checkers might say, oh, that's not necessarily true. They're giving it to American citizens to go out there and promote gay and lesbian lifestyles. Uh, if that's the case, let, now let's be transparent. I want to I, look, guys, I'm going to go ahead and contact the White House. I want $300,000 to go to Botswana. Not promoting the LGBTQ community. I want to promote Christian living and build a church. 
Can't do that. Separation of church and state. We can't do that. But you can give it to people to go promote LGBTQ gay rights and transgenderism in another country. Now, this isn't this ladies and gentlemen, this, Jill Biden acts. What has Biden done? What is its accomplishment? You know what we can do with $300,000 in this country? There's a lot of foster homes that could use $300,000. There's a lot of organizations. If you agree or disagree with them, they can use that money here in the States. No, we're going to send it to Botswana. Now, I don't know who these participants are. They're still looking at participants. Uh, but you know, these, these people are going to spend 18 months there promoting this and they're going to live high off the hog. This is my opinion, but it's this Biden. That's what your husband's doing. Um, she might say, well, he's doing this. He's doing this. no. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why his poll numbers is down. This is why backwards Joe is not looked high. Like I said earlier with the China issue, people are seeing that he couldn't stand up to China. He can't stand up in front of a door that's locked. He's going to buckle to dead. No, oh, please don't open. Please don't. It's locked. I'm just being honest with you. All right. So, um, also what Biden's doing, this is something I'm going to tie into what happened Tuesday night at the primary elections and certain elections that happen around this nation. Uh, Idaho's law, uh, well, correction, Idaho's near total abortion ban challenged by justice department. This comes from the Fox news, um, Fox news business. The department of justice filed a lawsuit on Tuesday, challenging Idaho near total ban on abortion, arguing that it would criminalize doctors for performing abortions during medical emergencies. Idaho's law is set to take effect on August 25th. After the Supreme Court in June overturned Roe v. Wade, returning to the issue of abortion to the states. Now, this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, um, like Louisiana, Louisiana has not all the Louisiana is one of these states that had trigger laws has been sued every way, shape and form. I haven't heard if they passed, they, they shot it down, but the state has shot it down twice. And every time they come a new lawsuit that keeps Planned Parenthood and keeps the abortion clinics open in Louisiana. I've never seen, look, look, don't get me wrong. Pro-lifers fought hard to end Roe v. Wade. I think now the left and these activists, the abortion activists are fighting harder to bring back abortion. I'm just being blunt. I'm seeing these people, they, the demons are manifesting out of these people trying to get this bill back, trying to get abortion back into every state and being under a constitutional law. The law now, now this is, this is why I wrote this bill down. Uh, this, this article down. The law bans all abortions except for the cases of incense of or rape that are reported to law enforcement or when a physician determines in his good faith medical judgment and based on facts known to the physician at the time that the abortion was necessary to prevent the death of a pregnant woman. Now, Idaho was saying, look, we're banning abortions across the board, except for three things. If it's causing to the death of the pregnant mother, for incest or rape. Now, if you listen to the Democrats, they, this is their top one argument. Oh, uh, oh, uh, y'all ban abortion. What about all them poor girls? Which is only like one percent, two percent, two percent, two one to two uh, percent. And you might ask me, Isaac, how you know that? I debated abortion. There's two of them on 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 camera. You can go on their website. You can go on their YouTube and find the debate. I crushed them with these numbers. Very small amount of these people are raped that had needed abortion or incest or debt to the mother. That's a very small percentage of the, 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 the people that need abortion. But the Democrats, they use this argument. What about incest? What about rape? What about protection to the mother? That was all in this bill. Why are Democrats still fighting it? Oh, it's going to criminalize the doctors just in case of emergency. <laughs> Joe Biden, this is what your president, your, your, your husband is pushing for to killing the life of innocent babies. But I, 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 that's the question I'm asking here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if, if, if the, 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 the Democrats are saying we need to keep abortion legal because of in, incest, rape, and for emergencies to the mother's life, why is Biden and the justice department fighting Idaho's law? 
I'm just I'm I'm asking that question because those are the things, and this proves the point. I I seen a, a video the other day. There was some people they were talking about abortions on Capitol Hill, and one 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 congressman said that he said, "Listen, you know, you, what about rape, incest, and and the health of the mother of the child, and this and it?" And the woman stopped him dead and said, "All right, I think it was a senator." She said, "Senator, hold on. We're gonna put those bill. We're gonna put that all in the bill." Now can we not have abortion? Well, well, hold on a minute. Oh no, no, we need to still have it because the right of the woman. To... They changed their they they changed their debate story. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. They they changed their whole debate story. Why? Because it's not about rape, incest, or care for the mother. It's because for some odd reason these leftist Democrats that support abortion, and these people that support abortion, really believe in killing the unborn because I, like I said this ladies and gentlemen and I think this is why they believe this is out of convenience see I want to have sex whenever I want I want to have sex with whoever I want and I don't want to face no consequences that's why abortion is so popular in America oh we can just take the day after pill and or, or if we do get pregnant we can go to the hospital and we can just get rid of the problem because, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a society that don't that don't care. They they want their fun, and hell with the consequences. Staying on the track of abortion, pro life amendment in Kansas was first abortion test since Roe v. Wade overturned. Here, how it fared. That's from the Daily Wire. Voters on Tuesday rejected a pro life amendment in Kansas, the first test of a voter statement following the overturning of the abortion case. Uh, ver, uh, of the abortion case Roe v. Wade by the United States uh, Supreme Court, which effectively kicked back abortion restrictions to the state. The vile, the vile them both amendment was def uh, defeated by for about 17 percentage points, backing the state, blocking the state from removing the right to the abortion in the state constitution. So what they wanted to do is they didn't want to make a law banning abortion. They wanted to put an amendment in their constitution to stop abortions in the state which would it mean if the supreme court would come back and say yeah you can have uh it's a constitutional right for a woman to have an oh excuse me have an abortion the state constitution would override that basically um joe Biden, president joe biden who is catholic cheered the victory for abortion right the votes make clear that we know the majority of americans agree that women should have access to abortion and should have the right to make their own health care decision he said according to associated press Mar uh, Marley, Marley uh, Caro, a spokesman for Susan B. Uh, Anthony's pro-life America, called the loss a huge disappointment and blasts abortion advocates for drowning out the truth with lies. Um, now, this also asks us a question, too. Will this affect uh, the midterm elections? Um, this is one state. Um, Biden trying to say this is how this this shows that all Americans want abortion. If you look at the numbers, uh, because look, it's right here in the deal. I'm going to go ahead. The stakes for the pro-life movement in the upcoming midterm list could not be higher. And there may be many factors in place. She added, it is critical that pro-life candidates go on the offense to expose the extreme of the Democrats policy goals for nationalized abortion on demand paid for by taxpayers. Uh, a statement from the group said that pro-life amendments would have the correct Corrected an overreach by the Kansas Supreme Court that in 2019 found alleged right to abortion in the state constitution and strike down the law passed by the state legislatures to limit it painful dismemberment abortions. Um, but going back to that about the, about the midterm elections. First off, Biden said this is the whole country. The whole country. This is Kansas. Also, if you look at the numbers, I read an article that more people voted for this than they voted for the Senate because Kansas had a primary on the 2nd of August. And on that note, all the other states, a lot of states, two uh, pro impeachment Trump uh, congressmen lost their seats and they, they, they lost their nomination and now going to a pro Trump candidate. Um, but this right here does not prove that the midterms, like I said, if you look at the, if you look at the voting numbers, majority of people voted for this and left everything else blank, which is their right. They can do that. 
that happened in Louisiana with uh, Ralph Abraham and uh, Eddie Risponi. People up north where Ralph Abraham's district was, they went and vote for everything else except the gubernatorial election. And that's why we got a Democrat governor in the state of Louisiana. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> Excuse me. But that's how this is. Now, this is show that they were they were passionate about the pro abortion stance. They weren't they weren't passionate about politics because the people did that. Well, guess what? They just does this prove that in the midterm election, people are going to run to the polls to vote Democrat because of pro abortion? No, it does not. If you look at last night in every other state that did not have an abortion uh, vote on there, like Arizona, M Missouri, all of them, they, they proved that it was, they were more focus, focused on policy and the wrongdoing. This is coming from the daily caller, several Trump backed candidates win their primaries with others too close to call the, the Arizona, uh, Senate race. Um, uh, yeah, the Senate primary is too close to call right now, but the former news anchor is holding on to that. Um, John Gibbs defeated the Republican, uh, Peter Majar who voted to, imp uh, impeach Donald Trump. We had another one from, um, from Arizona, the same way. He said, I'm not here to get reelected. I'm here to do what's right. Uh, you usually do what your constituents ask you to do, which voting for Trump to be impeached was not right. So, so on that note, we'll see. But like I said, last night we, they did have some candidates, but this, this not look, I'm disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I'm disappointed in the Kansas, um, amendment that was voted to, to, to keep the key, uh, not put this amendment in there. I think this would save lives, but ladies and gentlemen, that just shows that we have a fight. You know, all you pro-lifers out there that think, oh, because Roe versus Wade is gone. We don't have to fight. We don't have to continue marching and what we should still have a March for life every year in Washington, DC, rain, snow, sleet, whatever. We still should have that in, in the U S Capitol. Why? Because we still got to fight for life. We still got to fight because there's people on the other side. Like I said, the demons are manifesting in them. Ladies and gentlemen, the demons are manifesting in them because they want to have abortion back in the state. And they're not going to stop until they do in this country. They want abortion back in this country nationwide law. And that just shows, uh, and see, this proves another point too, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down for the day. The Republicans always sit back in the heat of the fight. When we win a battle, we sit back. Unfortunately, I'm not doing it. I, I have this, this podcast. I have, I have multiple media outlets that I can talk to and bring out my views. It, the thing of it is I'm not, I don't want to be like that. I was like that too. When Donald Trump won, I, ah, ah, Donald Trump, won. he's going to win a second. That's Joe Biden. And guess what? We didn't fight. We didn't keep up the fight to, to fight for life. We, it, we would not fight to keep our Republic going, but this one, we need to fight. If you're a pro-lifer and you just, ah, oh, man, I don't need a fight, man. Roe versus Wade is gone. My state said they're not going to have abortions. Look at Louisiana. We're still fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, keep up the fight, fight for the life of the unborn because the left, they're not quitting. They're not quitting anytime soon. On that note, I want to thank you for listening to the Cajun conservative show until next time. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Remember Jesus Christ is coming back and he's coming back soon. So don't be faded for it because Jesus has overcome the world. If you want to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and savior, please shoot me an email and I'll get in touch. We can tell you how to make Jesus your eternal savior in heaven, your eternal home until next time, folks, you be blessed. You be encouraged. Bye-bye.